And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest chit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only monk, better known as Mildred, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, a man of a, th a man of thousands upon thousands of voices, some of them more epic than others, some of them more honest than others. The one and only John Bailey. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm good. They're all honest, really. <laughs> Unless it's the character is not an honest character, but the voices, the the performance is honest at least. Yeah, I had to work it. I had to work it in somehow, yeah, I and I was it's hard to slip that one in there too. <laughs> I was tempted to do. I was tempted to do some sort of inner world joke, but every time I tried to yeah. work it out, it just didn't work, and it was too obvious. It's, and it's uh, yeah, it's been de kind of done to death on these interviews too. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty. Sh I'm pretty sure that somebody has done the inner world thing at least once. In More interviews. than a sum. There's a whole lot of some ones that have done that one for. I'm, pr uh, I'm pretty sure if I had a dollar for that, it could pro I could probably. I could probably. Oh, dude! Uh, if I had a dollar for every time that's happened, I would have you know like enough to buy like a happy meal or something. Uh, either that, you'd have, you'd have enough to re to recreate that um, diving into the vault scene in Ducktales. No, that that break your neck. Okay, they did they did that on MythBusters. I think that's how one of them died. It's <laughs> probably why the show was canceled too. They tried to die. Like, we want to see how, if it's possible to swim through money, so, solid gold coins. No, you, uh, could probably, no, you could probably swim through doubt. Swim through. Uh, maybe dollars. ducks can. Maybe maybe ducks are aerodynamic when they swim. <laughs> they are. They do swim naturally compared well, to humans. So. Well, they probably do it to get away from the geese because geese are assholes. That's true. They uh, they like to bite private parts. Uh, yeah. My my grandfather had a farm, and that was a big goose. <laughs> that was not a big kid. I I work out I work out in the middle of nowhere, and sometimes there's turkeys that'll just walk they'll just walk into the parking lot. And there's been a couple times where I've walked where I've gotten out of my I gotten out of the car, and all of a sudden there's a goose about ten feet away from me who's just bull rushing me. Yep. So I had to run right back yeah. in. Run, run right into the building and slam the well, damn door. It's no, it's no wonder Donald Duck had such a bad reputation. I mean, it's like every time you see one, if you're if you're too close, you get, you know, they just go nuts on you. Yeah, but on to sane things, relatively. <laughs> um, what was what was it that sparked you to to pursue acting and then eventually um voice acting? Well, uh, money mostly. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's being able to do funny voices is something I always kind of did, even from when I was really little. And uh, it started off as kind of a competitive thing between my mom and I with, you know, voices from Sesame Street. And mm -hmm. it, it progressed into a love of Saturday morning cartoons and, you know, the cartoons after school, which progressed into, you know, learning who people did what when it came to when video games started to putting voices in them and, you know, the beginning of the very, very early beginnings of, of Google and the information about voice actors started to become more obvious and, you know, started to grow. And then movies came out with, a, you know, I know that voice and uh, in a world. And so it just kind of started at, at a small just doing things to as almost a party trick you know mm -hmm. this is a funny thing it's it kept me out of getting beat up a lot you know if i can make them laugh usually it gave me time to get away uh got me out of trouble you know and sometimes got me into trouble in class <laughs> for doing voices uh my kindergarten teacher still tells me she's like i remember when you were in third grade and you were still do you were doing voices for your for for stuff then and i always knew you're gonna do something mm -hmm. so i apparently they knew it before i did um, I would record, you know, I would take my action figures and I would do a whole scene based on a, like a coloring book or comic book. And I would record the audio with Fisher on a Fisher Price tape layer uh, and uh, like go back and play it and play out the scene with the toys themselves. And for, for me, that, you know, like, we didn't have cell phones, you know, we didn't have cam. We were too poor for camcorders. So, uh, yeah. And then that kind of just went from there. And once I started finding out what things were and then I found um, resources online, we just listened to audio tapes or CDs or, you know, digital download audio file, just learned everything we could. I mean, mm -hmm. Google is your best, best friend. I mean, I, I feel like so many people could save tens of thousands of dollars instead of getting so much coaching and so many workshops. I mean, those are great, but a lot of that thing, stuff you can find out on the internet <laughs> for free. Yeah, I've, I've always looked at the internet as one, as one giant scavenger hunt. 
And it is. It's a giant <laughs> yard sale, and you just got to know what you got to know where the deals are. You got to be a very very savvy at. at you got to be very savvy at doing Google searches. Pretty much. Um, I'm googling right now why the rum <laughs> is always gone. <laughs> oh, I see. The result is because Johnny Depp has drank it all. Okay, well, that solves that mystery. <laughs> well, I, at the very least, I cannot be implicated in that because I don't drink rum. I don't drink rum in my temple. I drink meat. <laughs> I thought you said meat for a second. I was like, man, I didn't know they made meat and drink form now. That's cool. <laughs> Give some... Hey, if you have a strong enough blender, you can make it work. That's true. You gotta get one of those ninja blenders. Although, you know what? You think... It's it's so funny because I can never find our ninja blender. I just think that's so ironic. <laughs> because I, you never, I can never find it. It's always hidden somewhere. Um, it's like, man, that thing's good. <laughs> it's, like try, it's like trying to find... It's like, it's like trying to find Finnish snipers up north. Yep. It but it only blends things when I'm not looking. And then I turn around, yeah. it's gone again. It's like, whoosh, whoosh. it's like you have to become the shape of water. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you got select all select all images in the winter with finished snipers, all of yeah. them. Yep. <laughs> but when it now when it comes to when it comes to doing um, voice work, and I've I've asked something similar to this a lo- a while back when I had um Spike Spencer on. Some that have always guys just your... everywhere I go, he's like, "Hey, we just had Spike Spencer, or we're gonna have Spike Spencer next." Week. I was like, "Not following me around? <laughs> is, he just, is he just stalking me? Is he got a, did he clone my phone? Am I on the wire right now? Is that what no, I don't. I don't. Think I, it... And he's like texting me too. He's like, "Oh, dude, I heard you were on the show. That I'm gonna be on there, now. <laughs> or I'm gonna be on there the same day that you're gonna be on." There. No, and I I'm don't. And I'm like, "Who is this new phone? Like Who that? is?" <laughs> um, but but no, this is it's just some, it's just something that I'm always that I'm always curious about is endurance and obviously oh, when nice. you're, when you're I mean. doing um when you're doing <laughs> takes you're prop you've probably had your fair share of instances where you're doing multiple takes in one in one session um what do you usually have for gimmicks in order to make sure that you don't um overdo it with your uh, voice ah that's what you mean by endurance i thought mm-hmm. you just meant you know never mind uh so yeah, just you, you got to get so comfortable with the instrument that you're given, mm-hmm. you know. So and you, and you, it's not it's not just your voice or just your throat. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of different parts in there. If your nose is affected, your voice is affected, you know. If your ears are affected, your nose your voice is affected. Mm-hmm. If your lungs are affected, your your diaphragm, there's a lot of different parts. Uh if you uh, as it as what happened to me with God of War 4, if you go on a really really long hike and then you have to do uh uh, an effort voice for being electrocuted, you could fall on your face and, and crash it and fall on the floor. It's not fun. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, yeah, you have to be overall very familiar with yourself. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you can start feel, if you feel pain, if you feel, you know, if you feel, if you feel resistance, stop. <laughs> um, either you're doing it wrong or you're, or you're, you shouldn't just do it at all. Like if you're not capable of doing it, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Just because because you're physically capable does not mean that you should, you know, so certain voices I try to avoid. Um, I'll give an example of mm-hmm. an effort because there's nothing that you have to be you have to be aware of, too, is that your microphone, you, you have to adjust the volume. So you can't go full voice sometimes when you go mm-hmm. for like a death scream or you're being attacked or stuff. But you can be like, ah, you know, that didn't hurt at all. Mm-hmm. But it sounded real. Yeah. But then there's people who go, ah, and that <laughs> really hurts. And then their throat is stripped, and then they got coughing up blood, and then they're just like, I can't work for a couple of days, you know. So, and some people go for it. Some people, like, they want it to be so realistic that they're going to go for it. And I'm like, I can't afford to do that. I work so much that if I hurt myself now, I'm going to lose several jobs. So I I have to try to plan that around the weekend so I have time to recover. But I just had to get very good at doing fake versions that sound realistic without actually doing any damage. Mm-hmm. When I was, I learned it really young too because I used to I, all my all my, my early impressions. Most of them came from Transformers, mm-hmm. and Megatron was one of those voices. Frank Welker is very good at doing voices that are over the back of your throat, but sound like they're super painful. But he can do it for hours and do and no damage is done. It took me a long time to figure out how to do that. Because a lot of people are doing it like, you know, they're really hurting themselves. And they're like, I don't understand how you do that. And you can just keep going. Because you can. You can either, your throat will either dry out or you, if your throat's dry, it can, you can hurt yourself. You just have to get comfortable with, you know, the way you're, because there's no way I can really explain it. I'm not a doctor. If I, could, if I was a doctor, I could probably explain this a whole lot. Because I don't know what parts are there that, are, that, are, that I'm talking about mm-hmm. that you need to be aware of in order to, to avoid damage and, and getting hurt and stuff so if you do it right yeah you can go all freaking day i mean you can do I, i've done video game sessions back to back or mm-hmm. done an anime session back to back with a video game session and both of them had efforts involved 
And I was fine. And I was like, oh, okay. So you get comfortable and used to it. But yeah, early on, I did hurt myself a lot more than I do now. But uh, every once in a while, uh, I'll kind of get into it. I'll really start, you know, I'll start just full 100% acting instead of trying to be careful not to hurt myself. And then I find myself getting into it. And then I actually end up doing some damage. And like, crap, I didn't mean to get so involved. And now I'm sore and my throat hurts and my abs are and cr- got cramps. And, you know, so, yeah, you have to be very, very conscious. Yeah, I got you. Now, since you since you brought that up um with with ringing up Me- with bringing up megatron um obviously one obviously one of the big one of the big things of, of note is um the vo- the voice work that you did that you did in 2015 at um, botcon so i've got a couple questions on that one um how did you f- how did you first get interest- introduced to transformers was that just something from even when you were a little kid was it i'm not i'm confused about what we're talking about at botcon <laughs> um <laughs> The script reading of the ret- of the Return of Blur. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that was after I'd I'd sort of become more well known. Mm-hmm. Um, people stopped recognizing me as just a convention goer or mm-hmm. just uh, a, just another Transformers fan. And by that time, I had I'd started to build up a resume. And I was actually doing professional voiceover work. Mm-hmm. So by then, it was like, oh crap! There's a an actual legit voice actor here. And every year, I had tried to get on the script reading panel because I love Transformers. Mm-hmm. And that year, I. I'd managed to network my way and got built up a resume and built up this, you know, semi successful career enough where people recognize me. And they were like, Oh man, we should, you should have it on, on the thing. So, uh, yeah, buddy. Uh, well, somebody that I know was already doing voices on it. He's like, dude, you, we should, you gotta be on this thing. Like, just follow me. We're just go. So yeah, that's how that, that all kind of worked out. It was, it's not like that was a paid gig or that was a, you know, it, they usually have, guests or professionals uh, to fill in as many spots as they can unless they have enough guests to cover it mm-hmm. and then they'll offer one or two spots to uh to convention guests you know mm-hmm. not 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 guests but you know goers um the regular folks and they have to do like they have a whole panel where they audition for it and they talk about voice acting they have them try out and the audience you know decides and the panel decides on who gets the roles and then the, the panel afterward is the script reading thing so we got to i got to watch the rehearsal part and then i got to watch the uh got to be on the panel mm-hmm. and then i got to be on the panel afterwards as well which is the, all that was really fun but it was kind of funny that that's ended up on on my transformers credit list as standing in as, as tara strong's burp for sorry which is hilarious <laughs> to me i can't that's actually out there folks i mean you have to really hunt to find that on the internet but it's there <laughs> look never underestimate the power of internet detectives yeah, I'm not gonna put sorry on my, you know, like convention picture with all my <laughs> characters that I voiced because I did it one time at a convention panel, folks. That's not, I'm not Tara Strong. I mean, I'm just very good at doing fake burps. I just practiced under Maurice LaMarche a lot. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> but even even with even with that, the um, now obviously with with nicknames like the Epic Voice Guy and the like, the um, there's no way there's no way that I can't talk about um the work that you've done with. Um, on, with honest trailers and yeah, you can't avoid it. I mean, people will be ended. like, "Why is his name so, Epic Voice Guy?" <laughs> so, the first qu- first question that I have to ask on that on that front is how? What's the story about how that got, about how your involvement with that got started? Uh, I started on YouTube in 2007, mm-hmm. and I one of the very first videos I did in that first few months was uh, my own version of like all the best movie trailer voice guys, mm-hmm. you know. So. I kind of combined every genre of film into one trailer that I wrote myself and then switched between the voices. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so that video did really well. I mean, for, for me, it, it got like 38 something thousand views over the course of three years. And, uh, when Dala Fatain passed away during that time, this was way after I'd recorded the video, mm-hmm. but my, my first manager, a lot of people were like, well, who's going to be the next on after they just start? They, nobody really thought about it. And of course, a lot of people were like, I'll take the job, you know, because that's just the nature of the business. You're going to have a few folks like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wasn't really looking for it. That was a video that I'd made before. You know, I, I knew I didn't know Don even had any health issues. It was very, a lot of people were kind of thrown off by it because he was barely he wasn't even quite 60 years old and he just died. So uh, it because of the view count, it got high up on the searches. A lot of people don't realize that YouTube is like the second biggest search engine next to Google. Mm-hmm. And so he's typed in, you know, movie trailer voice or Donald LaFontaine or whatever. And I was pretty, getting pretty good at hashtags and, and, and you, not hashtags, but uh, uh, keywords because you mm-hmm. had to put in, you know, your keywords in, into the YouTube search thing. And he found that video. And, you know, by then I'd had a decent amount of views on it. And he was really surprised at not only my ability to do the voices, but also the fact that I even knew who the guys were. I mean, I, I think I spelled one guy's name wrong. 
But, you know, the fact that I'd found them, and that was pre, you know, tons of information being on Google for voice actor stuff, especially those guys, like the guys who were the trailer guys, er everybody only knew Don and Hal, and that was pretty much it. If I said the word Pedro, or the name Pedro Rodriguez, people would be like, Bleh? So, you know, they, they don't know who all of them are, and there's only about a dozen of them. So the fact that I knew five or six, you know, and I did, you know, pretty good sound alikes for all of them in this one video, and it did pretty well, mm. he was really impressed with it. So he... It shot me over a message and he had me try out for some stuff and the whole thing kind of felt scammy to me because they needed things like my social security number and you know my a copy of my driver's license for for you know and that's normal in the business but you have to understand i hadn't gotten that far into the business yet so i didn't know so the whole thing i was like holy crap we're gonna wake up and our bank account's gonna be empty and <laughs> they are negative because they stole from us and you know thankfully through my wife and i just taking the plunge we got a nice check in the mail and he's like you know what i think i'd like to manage your career he's now he's not a voiceover manager mm -hmm. he he runs a trailer company but he saw something and apparently they had just recently lost a couple of guys that normally they would hire a lot and they got pretty big i won't mention any names and they basically just stopped working for him out of you know and it was kind of a loyalty thing yeah. and uh he felt a little disappointed that because he helped create the guy's career and he helped get him started and then once he got up to a certain point he just kind of left him in the dust and i'm like i don't do that I'm, i'll work for you until you get rid of me which is literally what happened he pushed me over onto another manager once i got too big <laughs> for him to be able to handle my career anymore so uh yeah he tried me out and said i think you got a lot that we can work with mm -hmm. and he put me with with his producer they did a, lot, a ton of trailers in there and you have to understand just because i've done hundreds of trailers doesn't mean they're hundreds and hundreds of winners they're not all you know marvel cinematic universe stuff although there's been a few uh, <laughs> i've done i've done some for i did some for guardians and a couple other things um but there's all different types of trailers too people are like well i didn't hear you in the theater i didn't hear you on the television well you forget that there's not just there's not just theatrical trailers. There is trailers on the radio, Pandora, Spotify, YouTube, the uh, you know FM, AM radio stations, multiple radio stations. Uh, then you've got the TV spots. Then you've got the ads that play on streaming services mm -hmm. between shows. Mm -hmm. So you could find there's there ends up being dozens and dozens of trailers, especially for big films. You could have a campaign that could be fifty something spots. You may not be the voicing the entire thing. Now, if you book the entire thing, then you're awesome. But if you book one or two, you know, not everybody's going to hear it. It's, it's out there somewhere. But early on, it was a lot of stuff that you might find in your the Walmart DVD bin, you know, mm -hmm. is the Never Back Down 2, the Beatdown, starring Michael Jai White. And when I met Michael Jai White and I did the voice, he's like, oh, man, I know who you are. <laughs> I was like, hey, we actually kind of sort of work together on yeah. something. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where not everybody's going to know everything that I worked on, but mm -hmm. I, I have. I've done hundreds of real trailers on top of doing the Honest Trailer stuff. Yeah. And by the time that that same video, that's what I think is hilarious, the same video that my manager found me on several, about, about a year or so later, is the same exact one that the guys at, at, at Honest Trailer Screen Junkies channel found. And they, by that time, though, I had changed the caption over to link to my website. And my mm -hmm. website at the time looked like a giant Netflix page, just all these thumbnails of DVDs, most of them linked to a YouTube video of the trailer that I did with my voice on it, kind of like a mini little, you know, a little uh, demo. Mm -hmm. So, and then he was like, oh, wow, it'd be so cool to have like a real movie trailer guy on our show. And he sent me a couple of links. I'll be honest, I only clicked on one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was the, I think it was the Dark Knight was the one that they sent, was the first one that I clicked on. And I remember thinking that the writing was, the writing was pretty solid, but I could tell that the guy who was doing it currently was not a professional. I mean, he was, he sounded, he sounded good, but he just, he didn't sound like he'd been doing it for real. And he'd got called into active service and they tried me out. And the first one, they tried to explain to me exactly what they were doing. And I just thought that it was my, my initial thought after watching, because I'll be honest, I also didn't watch the entire video. Mm -hmm. I only watched a few seconds of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, 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 I first thought that this was supposed to be a fake movie trailer and that instead of it being you find out as you go through the, the video, wait, this isn't real. They're make, they're pointing out things about the movie that's not, that's, you know, they're making fun of it or they're making jokes about it. Mm -hmm. And so that was my I, I didn't really think of it as the whole thing is basically making fun of a real real trailer. We're not trying to trick people into thinking this thing is real. Mm -hmm. We're just making uh, we're making something that looks like a real trailer, but is straight up like pointing out all the things that are funny and wrong. And, you know, we're it's a comedy series. Mm -hmm. Once I figured that out, like the first the, the most complaints that we got, because a lot of fans, you, you know how fans can be on the Internet. Nobody oh, likes change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the other guy had done maybe 10 of them or 10 or 12 uh, videos 
but they had already had a pretty big fan base. So when I came along, of course, I got a lot of negative comments about, oh, bring the old guy back, this guy, blah, blah. And a lot of people's biggest complaint was that it sounded too good, that it sounded like <laughs> a real trailer and not an honest trailer. And then I was like, oh, and the light bulb came on. I was like, I'm making fun of me. Now I get it. <laughs> so I, I was way too, and they're right. Like the first one, I, I, I was trying to make it sound like a real trailer because I thought that was the whole point, to make people think at first, hey, this is a real trailer for the thing. And then as you go through, it's like, wait a minute. You know, this, oh, okay, I guess this is funny. It's not a rug pull, and mm-hmm. I didn't know that at first. Um, so it, it started off a little rocky. Uh, the first one I took way too seriously, mm-hmm. and then the second one was Harry Potter. And I, again, I thought that we were trying to make them sound like the original trailers so people would stumble. Uh, my, my thought was, okay, these guys are trying to make it look like the real trailer, so when people are looking up the trailer for a film, they're going to see this and click on it. So it needs to look and sound like the real thing, so they'd be like, Oh, this is the tra- wait a minute. I don't remember them saying that. And then it's joke, 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 joke. And oh, I get it. It's a comedy series. Surprise. So I suggested that we do the voice of the guy who did the trailer for Harry Potter. And if you don't remember, the voice of the trailer for Harry Potter was a British guy. And a lot of people were like, oh, bring back the other voice. I'm like, I'm the same guy. I was the same guy <laughs> from the last video. I'm just doing a different voice. And then, you know, they. They were like, they, that's probably why they don't take very many of my suggestions, because one of my very first suggestions early on was one that, that kind of was a negative for them. And I'm surprised we haven't gone back and redone those trailers in the normal voice, but that was my stupid idea. I, th- I thought that was a good idea, though. I thought it'd be cool to make it sound like the original trailer with, by having that same exact voice that was in the original one. Um, but uh, <laughs> after the first two, that's kind of when we hit our stride. Mm-hmm. And it, it they, they I remember they even put like those... I forget what they're called now because they don't use those anymore. But when you used to be able to put something on the screen, they call them titles now or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they would put the like the banners on the screen or whatever. Yeah. And to be like, uh, if you don't, if if you're wondering why the voice change, check out the original trailer here, so they could so they could get what we were going for. Mm -hmm. So they had to put kind of this on screen disclaimer about that one. (laughs) But then after that third one, it just kind of fell into place. And Mm -hmm. then I I realized after that one, it's like, oh, I get what they're doing now. You know, I didn't quite have the entire picture in my head, but then once I figured that out, we kind of smoothed things out. I would improv some stuff off of what they wrote, or we'd, and we'd back and forth and kind of just brainstorm and get the best, you know, possible read out of the thing. They Early on, there was a lot of, like, repeating themselves. Like, they would say, so strap in for, and then two seconds later, so strap in for. I'm like, wait, we just did that one. And, like, well, what else can we do? And I'm like, buckle up, you know, get ready now. You know, there's, like so many things in trailers because i've been doing them for over a year at the time Mm -hmm. and they're like oh i forget you do this for a living so you know all the phrases so they uh we just kind of polished it up and you know we kind of found each other within the first probably that first three to five months Mm -hmm. and then after that point it was just it's pretty much clockwork um we we, we've got it down to an exact science now we have an exact day time uh, how long it's going to get done in and you know there's very little re-recording pickups or anything we get it done you know, barely even a week before it comes out. That's how fast these guys edit that thing and turn it back around again. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's been six years, seven years now, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, when it com- now, when it comes to that whole phrases thing that you mentioned, something I'm curious about is have have when going th- when going through the script or, or when going through sessions, have there ever been cases where you felt like certain certain phrases or certain tags you were getting a little too comfortable with? Uh, no, not really. I, I always just try to keep a lookout for things that are redundant or monotonous or they just keep using the same thing over again. Mm-hmm. And if it's on purpose, at least change the read up or, you know, whatever. But yeah, I just try to make sure that it sounds the best and doesn't sound, you know, because then it just gets very factory. You know, it's, it's just too robotic and it doesn't sound it's not funny anymore. Yeah. And. Hell, we are we already had a we already mentioned a classic case of that when it came to the the pervasiveness of in a world. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of used to death for a long time, and then after Don died, they've kind of retired that phrase, and they only recently started even using it a little bit uh, for official stuff, for unofficial mm-hmm. YouTube and stuff. That people have been doing the in a world thing for forever. They're not going to ever let that one go. No, because it's too awesome. There's just there are four awesome words together <laughs> in a world. I mean, if you put it in that voice, it just sounds so stinking cool. And you can change out the word world, but the inner something has to stay there. Yeah. It's three words. Three words. I'm sorry. I don't know where that fourth one came from. <laughs> it's the it's the phantom word. It's the word yeah. it's the word that it, it's the word that exists, it's but the, the secret that word that nobody else knows. That's the fourth word. Is it's it like Schrodinger's word? Is silent. Yeah. Yes, it's exactly. <laughs> it is a word it is a word and also not a word at the same exact time. Yeah. Um were the 
can you think of any instances of of a tra- of a trailer or or a sc- or a script for for the like that was a bit was a bit um trickier to convey than others? I mean, yeah, I've I've, I've seen I've seen about everything you can see in you know thirteen years doing this job. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's insane. <laughs> It's insane the kind of things that you that you stumble across and you're like, what? <laughs> um, sometimes it's just, you know, it's just a typo, you know, but sometimes it's like, how in the world did they miss this? You know, and I, I automatically fix it. You know, it's just, I just kind of why why bot why, why why read it the way it's written if you know it's messed up, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes. Sometimes I'm afraid, especially for if it's for an audition, mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't want to stray too far from what they wrote. They may have intentionally made it sound stupid. You really don't know because you don't have enough information about whatever this thing is. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's so obvious. Like, I'm just like, okay, well, the, I found that every client that I've had and whether I'm doing the auditions or whether I'm, you know, working for them, they seem to just l- like it when I just go with whatever feels the best, most natural. And usually that sometimes that involves improv and me coming up with something slightly different. Now there's a danger of doing that. There's a danger to be like, no, no, we don't like that. So if you do that too much, they're going to be like, okay, this guy, don't hire this guy again or we're never going to get done because all he does is his own thing and he's ruining the script. But every once in a while, but the, the, the problem is that every time you do that, they're going to have to change the script to what you changed it to, which adds more time to your session. Mm-hmm. And all of them are about getting the session done with and getting as much done as fast as possible and getting done with. Because studios cost like 10, 20 grand an hour. Mm-hmm. So they want to get in and get out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I try not to go crazy with the improvs, but sometimes I just can't. Like when it's when the English is so bad. Uh, I remember when I worked on Dishonored 2. When I worked mm-hmm. on Dishonored 2 for two, the, there was some. We laughed so hard because it was written by somebody that that I'm guessing was was leaning more way more British than you know American. So some of the lines just sounded so funny in an American voice, and we, and I would just every time I came across one, I literally just do. And they knew we were gonna have to change it. They they knew we were gonna have to. But I'm like already there, and we were blowing through them, and we got done so early. And I would just read it as is, and everybody in the booth would just crack up laughing. I was like, yeah, we know, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta fix that one. I was like, I, I'm just reading the way you put it on the script, man. <laughs> uh, and given given that, have there have have there been instances of um of going through a script where where it's a where it's a case of ink so um. English is not that person's first language or something like that. That's so many times, dude. I mean, I, it's not to insult anyone no. who doesn't speak English, but you can't help but laugh when you try to actually record this stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous when you say it out loud. And yeah. I'm guessing because their English is not very good in their heads, it sounds amazing, you know, because they don't mm-hmm. speak it very well. But then when it comes to actual English, it sounds not so great. <laughs> well, I've... um. I've had to, I've had to do hard translate through, through either Google Translate or, ba- or Babblefish when it comes to some when it comes to some old notes and sometimes those translations are close enough I guess <laughs> oh who am I kidding yeah. it's not even and sometimes they'll 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 do a typo on something or they won't give you a pronunciation mm-hmm. and you can't get back to them to find out what how they want this made up place or person or thing said and you you end up just trying to figure it out i'll give you an example uh mm-hmm. when i i mentioned they got a four four job mm-hmm. so when i got the audition for that originally they put in there there's like we're we're going to have this done in uh an accurate you know ancient norse and i'm oh. like holy crap because <laughs> <laughs> you know assassin's creed and all these they're mm-hmm. very very accurate about as much as they possibly when it comes to historical games mm-hmm. so they try to make as much of it as real as possible and so I was like, uh, and they, they thought that if they, they, they wrote it out two ways, they wrote it out in the original ancient Norse, which includes all these little letters and symbols that I have no idea. And do you think Google translate can figure that out? Nope. Uh, and then underneath that, they felt, they spelled it out phonetic, phonetically in English letters and it didn't help at all. Like it was, <laughs> like, I was like, honestly, I don't know which one's harder to read. So I was the only thing I could think of was just to commit. So I just freaking committed, and I was fresh off the find the and I just Swedish chefed my way through it, and I ended up getting the job. So <laughs> it really is just about commit. If you don't know how to pronounce it, or if you just like, there's no flipping way. Just freaking go for it. Just act like you've been saying this your whole life, and this mm-hmm. is just how you talk, and you know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, you know, fake it, it may not you sound make like it. Any, you may, yeah, exactly. So I, I tried to make sure, and this often happens like when I. Uh, I was working on Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, mm-hmm. and the sim- the symbiote warriors don't have any speech. 
mm-hmm. they just make noises. So I made sure that anytime I would say something that was the same word, I would try to use the same sound. I was creating a language on the spot in my brain <laughs> because I, w- I didn't want anybody to go like, okay, well, he said this word here in this one spot, and then he says this word here in another spot, and this, the creature sounds different. So, <laughs> so anytime I had a spot like the word Capcom, you know, I would use that same creature sound for that same word mm-hmm. every time it came across in the script. Or I tried to. I mean, I'm not going to lie. We go through those things so fast. Sometimes it's not. I'm not going to be able to remember. Because it's not like I can write that down. No. Now, how do you write down? I'm a I don't know. I don't know what letters are in there. I just made a thing. <laughs> so I just have to try to kind of create this database while I'm in the middle of the session. Live, under pressure with people watching and listening in from probably Japan or Tokyo. Mm-hmm. You know, thousands and thousands of miles away in a totally different time zone and i'm just sitting here trying to make this sound accurate and you know so you, you got to be kind of good at it. Improv- improvisation skills are such an important tool because mm-hmm. uh, if you can match that with you know just infinite patience <laughs> you're good to go yeah um now one of the when it came to video game rules um one of the more notable ones that i that i came across during my research was of course the spokesman in um in the rebooted run for XCOM. You are correct, Commander. And I'm curious how how that how that one came about, and what sort of um, what sort of bullet points you were get you were given when it came to getting the voice down. That's a great story. Um, so I had, uh, believe it or not, it came from another YouTube video, and this one was a horrible video. <laughs> uh, I had one of those those Nokia sliders. Mm-hmm. So that the, it was like the, the you slid it up and the keyboard was underneath. It was the first video phone that I'd had. And it was, I mean, it looked like something that a 13-year-old girl should have. It was white and purple, but, you know, it was the only video phone that I could afford. So the quality is awful. Mm-hmm. But I was stuck in traffic one day. I was supposed to, I got, I got off work early and I thought I was going to be slick and go, go to a movie before I came home. Because it was like fi- finding time to do anything back then in my old job was really rare. So I had like a couple of hours and I lost the whole time just and I ended up just going home because I was stuck in traffic for so long. But while I was stuck there, I was trying to make a video. So I had memorized the speech from the Transformers movie, the 2007. Mm-hmm. And I just recorded that in the car and it had so many views because people were on there saying like, this is not his real voice. He pulled the audio from the movie. I'm like, how did I pull just the voice out of there without pulling all the other sound effects and music out? You know, like it's really me just because the bad lip sync from a crappy phone doesn't mean it's not me. And I got a message on YouTube, of all places, I got a message on YouTube from 2K Games, from the casting director of 2K Games, that said, I loved your Optimus Prime video, I'm working on this game, and I've got this this character that's very, uh, he's very inhuman, but we don't, we want to keep the character, the, the players guessing as to whether he's a good guy or bad guy, or human or alien, or controlled by humans, or, uh, you know, robot, or whatever, is he good, we don't really know, he's just shadowy, and he's speaks for the council that's providing you the funds and supplies for you to be able to play the game and defeat the aliens, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And he's like, normally I would go through hundreds of, of auditions, and when I stumbled across your video, I heard exactly what I was sound, what I, what I wanted to hear, uh, the sound I wanted to hear, and uh, I just wanted to cut through all that red tape and just hire you directly. Do you have, already have an agent? Let me know. We'll work this thing out. And thankfully, I did have an agent at the time, and I'm like, well, you're in luck, buddy, because I happened to do this real for real. And I sent them over there, and... That's how I started working for 2K Games. That was my first AAA game, and uh, the only thing, the only thing that ever bothered me about the game, and it's it's an OCD thing, it has nothing to do with the company, the game, or anything else. It was the fact that we in the trailers, it's hello, Commander, but in the game, it was this for. I mean, it was, it was a little bit different. It was just slightly, and I was like, is, am I not the same guy from the trailer? I just never could really kind of put those two pieces together. Mm-hmm. But then later on, for the for the sequel games, we went back to this voice. So. Um, so in the in XCOM Enemy Unknown, uh, you'll notice that the voice is slightly different. It, it was, it was kind of this London, the London England guy from uh, my, uh, from Austin Powers mm-hmm. was kind of what I was going for, and that's what they wanted for the thing. But I, I in my brain, I was like, but the trailers are slightly different. And then uh, so later on down the road, though, you know, the other game takes place like a decade or two later on, so it made sense for the voice to slightly change because the guy's older now. Mm-hmm. So. So that's how kind of, that's kind of how I let my OCD process. The, but they don't sound the same. You have no you have no idea. Like I can't even watch some shows because they replace an actor or they change a voice. Oh, and I'm like, oh no, OCD aggravated. And I, like, <laughs> yeah, I um, I, I there have been, there have been way too many times where I've go, where I've gone with this whole thing of 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 
just dealing with vo just dealing with voice changes and tr trying to enjoy it, but the yeah. problem is the damn OCD keeps ki keeps kicking yeah. in, and keeps kicking it's me on the right. side of the head with it. That's not the same friggin' voice. It has nothing voice. to do with the company. It has nothing to do with anything other than my brain wants everything to be very uniform and the same, and I hate changes. And even when it's me, you know, yeah. uh, I I it bothered me when we worked on the Transformers thing that Peter Cullen wasn't the voice all the way through. You know, it bothered me that I was the voice in the first season <laughs> because at the time they didn't have the budget for Peter Cullen. And then he came in. I was like, OK, but now when you watch it, it sounds weird to go back to back with that, you know. So it's like some things I feel like I messed up because I even had the job in the first place. I ruined my own thing and now I <laughs> can't even listen to it because it sounds weird to have two different voices. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a weird personal thing. I mean, as far as the jobs all go, I think all of them are awesome, and I love working on all of them. And uh, it's just like one of those weird things that I can't I can't handle. Like right right now, I found a, there's a spot in the booth I've been staring at since I got here because there's a a line that's slightly separated on some of my uh, my acoustic foam, and it's like gosh, that needs to be like fixed right there. <laughs> Look. I don't. I am of the. I'm of the opinion that no sane, well-adjusted individual gets into any artistic endeavor. I think so too. I think that's why I can never shut off the creative part of my brain either. But sometimes I just get burnout, or I just need a little break, vacation break. Like I've I've been posting content to a new app called Rizzle. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my some of my best stuff too. Like I've got several series going, which I love the fact that I can do a consistent, ongoing series with a common theme that can literally go on forever because I'm never going to run out of content for it because it's like celebrities going to the gym. How many celebrities have there been? I can make those videos until I die. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I, I took a little bit break because the holidays and this whole COVID thing and just work in general was just getting a little overwhelming. And I was like, you know what? I need to take a break from content. I didn't post anything to, to any of the apps except the bare minimum. The only thing I really was on much was Twitter mm -hmm. because it's, you know, there's no, I don't feel like there's pressure on Twitter. You just have, I just have to, either make a joke or re retweet somebody's thing that I'm trying to support or like somebody's deal or whatever, you know, there's not a lot to it, mm -hmm. but with all these other ones, you have to, know, you have to know the algorithms and you have to content has to be a certain length of time. It has to include certain hashtags and this and this and this, and it just gets to be a little bit much when you're already trying to balance this whole other career mm -hmm. and you're trying to run all this stuff yourself, but it's also a necessary evil because if you don't have social media presence, you're basically cutting your chances of becoming a successful voice actor in half. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the voice actors are that keep telling me like I haven't been booking a lot lately. My my stuff's way down. It's like, are you doing anything, any content? Are you on social media at all? Uh, I I got my my Facebook page and or I got I just got Twitter. No, I don't have any social media. What is that? You know, so <laughs> they don't realize that it's it's part of the game now. You know, you have to play the way the game is designed. And right now they've incorporated social media into it. And I don't think that's all. I don't think that's a complete bad thing, because we're. The, the chances of becoming an on-camera celebrity, mm -hmm. like for a movie or a TV series or whatever, it's so much more rare than becoming popular and going viral on the internet. So it, it's and, and they're comparatively the same amount of of what people actually care about. So if they, when it comes to voiceover jobs, if you have verified check marks and you have millions of followers, you're you're just as in their eyes, you're you're on the same level as somebody that's a regular on a TV series, or mm -hmm. that does uh, that's a, somebody that works in movies, because you have that same celebrity status. That many people know you, even if it's not through voiceover work, it can help lead to that work. I know people who aren't even voice actors that because of their following has got voiceover jobs, in big AAA things or you know AAA games or mainstream. Uh, the guys from Smosh are extra voices in the Angry Birds. I mean, you know, do you think that happened because they were on camera actors. <laughs> Although nope, the way they you were popular on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Although the way you described it it almost it almost sounds like you had to be the unofficial um social media co so social media teacher for for uh, for some bit. of the voice actors. Not not I'm not going to name names, but yeah, there's a lot of people that I, I've even considered doing a social media for voice actors like coaching class mm -hmm. because I find so many people, people that I look up to that I you know like try to emulate their their work because mm -hmm. they're so much better at it than I am and they're like inspire, inspiring me and they don't know what they're doing on social media and I feel like and I can't just keep I, can't, I feel like I'm just collecting lost puppies everywhere I go I was like I can't help everybody I want to <laughs> I can't I don't have time to do my own job but yeah it's just something that people need to know that it's that's you, you need to have it and you need mm -hmm. to be decent at it you know I'm not the greatest at social media but compared to a lot of other voice actors I think I do pretty well mm -hmm. you know so it's just it's all about 
learning how it works and, and, and incorporating it into your voiceover career. Mm-hmm. Oh, with the, now with that in, with that in mind, I know you I know you said that that when it came to content, you're kind you're kind of on a sep, you're kind of on a semi break. But what can what can we look forward to from the future from you from you? Well, uh, I'm going to be in some more cartoons and games. I just, unfortunately, are not. I'm not allowed to say anything. But you can hear me in uh, the third episode of Animaniacs. That's on Hulu right now. You can hear me in Bumblebee. That's on Hulu right now, as well as other places, obviously. Um, you can hear me on uh, in Man Seeking Woman and uh, Goldberg's. All these shows are on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can hear me in several anime on Netflix. Um, Saint Seiya, the uh, the Lost Scroll. Uh, Glitter Force Doki Doki Le- Leviosa or Levios. Um, there's one that's very mature called uh, called Backstreet Girls. Uh, yeah, there's 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 stuff out there. It's mm-hmm. just you know finding all of it's kind of gonna it's gonna take you a bit. And the new stuff, unfortunately, they don't never let me allow to, allow me to talk about that kind of stuff. There's there is a fairly new one though, Marble Marble Quest on uh, Apple Arcade. I'm King Roland in that, um, with, along with Christina V and Erica East, a lot of other voice actors that folks might remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but other cool stuff is coming. I just I gotta wait till I'm allowed. <laughs> oh, good good things come to those who wait. That's right. I keep telling my son that, but hopefully one day he'll actually remember it. <laughs> stop, stop being so dang impatient. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's not like a, it's not like I'm one to pa- one to pass judgment given given. Um, Given all the traffic stories that I've had to, I've had to put up with and some, and some of my past work, <laughs> honestly, I went back home for Thanksgiving not this past year but the year before last, and uh, I was <laughs> the first thing I thought was like, where is everybody? Because <laughs> I've, I've been out in L.A. for this will be our fourth year, and uh, I just I'm so used to it being so full of people and cars that going back home kind of I, I thought it was pretty busy, you know, until I went <laughs> went somewhere that was busier and then come back and it's like. Man, it's like a ghost town around here. I can just drive all the way across the street. It's insane. Well, well, that's what that's what happens, I suppose, when you le- when you leave the world's largest parking lot. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, my brother, my my poor, poor, deluded brother, he thinks that the traffic in Atlanta is worse. He is incorrect <laughs> because I've seen both. Atlanta's might be a little nutty, and it's a lot of folks, but I, the worst traffic I've ever seen is out here because it's it's not just. Every once in a while, because Atlanta is usually dependent on on accident, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of accidents. It's just freaking busy all the time here. And even yeah. during quarantine, it's been so it's a nightmare to try to drive around. For a little while though, between March and May or so, man, I could drive all the way around the city in just a few minutes time because everybody was staying home mm-hmm. and nobody was driving. I was like, this is oh, man. I wish it was like this all the time. <laughs> I get all the way down to the beach in like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, and when. I will. I will admit that I ha- I don't have as much experience with LA traffic as as you do. But I grew up with all the different horror stories about how bad LA traffic is. And then a few years ago, when I was heading to E3, I finally got my first taste of that LA traffic. And I had the the day that I got to the hotel, I ended up messaging everybody who told me those horror stories, and it said, <laughs> "You guys were lowballing this." Yeah, I feel like if anything we do, we underplay how horrible it can be. Mm-hmm. I was uh, okay. So I don't know if you know who that uh, that super popular, like boy, Japanese or, or the one of those boy bands, you know, pop something, electro or whatever. I don't know what that genre is called or whatever, but K K pop. Mm-hmm. Like that that this group came over. It was their first time. I didn't know this was going on. Mm-hmm. It was their very first American concert. And me like a moron, I accepted an invite to a birthday party that it was like a mile or so away. And I was stuck in traffic for five hours straight. I didn't go anywhere for five straight hours. I just sat in the one spot on the, on the off ramp. I can't go backward. I can't go left or right. And I'm, I'm stuck there. I can't. I'm the, if there was an emergency situation, I would have been, I would have been so screwed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is not worth the trip down here. I ended up having to park literally a mile away and walking all the presents and everything, walking them all the way through all the traffic. And some some security guy or cop or whatever was like, he's like, you going to a birthday party or something? I was like, yeah, my idiot friends had a birthday party apparently. It's a couple blocks away from here. And they didn't. They they warned me about the about the concert, but I didn't know what they were talking about. I didn't take the chance to look up who it was, <laughs> and how. And then he, I said, I said, is it over left? He's like, yeah, but there's still like thirty thousand people or so left. I'm like, there's still thirty thousand people left. 
And this was hours after the concert was over. And <laughs> there was still 30,000 people there. Oh, the poor, that I was poor like, guy. if that was how many was left, I don't even want to know how many were there <laughs> to begin with. Oh, man. Yeah. It's... It was a long freaking walk. Man, I was sweaty and gross <laughs> like, by the time I got there. And I was like, man, I feel like I should have just brought me a change of clothes <laughs> to shower when I get here. Fortune favors uh, the prepared end up. And it's not because they didn't have parking. It's because you literally couldn't get there. You could not get to the address. <laughs> no. Every street was completely shut off. So unless you lived there, they wouldn't let you in. So I couldn't, I just could not get around traffic. They had blocked everything, every entrance to get to where they were. I, I just I just drove around and around and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I ended up parking like on a main street where there's tons of cars and just lucked up and found, well, God, maybe just felt sorry for me. And there was a spot right there on the, on the overpass. You know, it's not a fun place to park either. It's kind of scary parking on an overpass, and and then carrying this. Gi- and I I made the mistake of buying him a giant Nerf gun for his birthday present. Oh God! <laughs> and there was you know there was glass bottles and stuff, and it was heavy and bulky. And I'm trying to carry. By the time I got there, the packages and the paper were all torn up. Like you get to, it looked like a five year old had wrapped it. And I'm like, I promise these look good a mile and a half ago. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, they they probably did underplay how bad the traffic was. Yeah, was. and um, I didn't get home to almost four a.m. Man, and that was the the, the concert was over at eight. <laughs> <laughs> it was from six to eight, and I didn't get home to four. And i I can only I can only ima- I can only imagine um, being it being in those being in those long long lines when there's still thirty thousand people left. I've never seen that many. I was afraid I was going to get trampled by teenagers. They have never seen that many kids on the place. There's so many few adults there, and they all had the same face. Uh. <laughs> but it's... Uh, Thankfully, my kid has never dragged me to come. We, we did buy her. We bought her VIP tickets to Taylor Swift. My, my oldest was a, was a big Taylor Swift fan, mm-hmm. and it was for her 13th uh, birthday present. And I, so I took her to Nashville, which is not near as far away. Parked, you know, right down the street. <laughs> got walked right in there. Got to do the back- backstage thing. Nothing, nothing like what this other thing was. I had no idea who, how big that that band was, or that was their very first concert in time in this, in all of the United States. I bet people flew in from around the world for that concert. It was a nightmare. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised anyway, one bit. Uh, I'm sweating my butt off. So, <laughs> is there any other questions? Yeah, I think, I think that, I think that sh- that sh- that should about do it. And dumb. Well, if you ever, if you ever, if you ever need to cool down, I'd, I'd say spend, I'd say spend a weekend up here, up here because every, because everybody's running away from the cold this time of year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would, my wife would freaking love to move somewhere like Colorado or somewhere where they get snow like all the time. Mm-hmm. Of course, she doesn't realize that just because she wants snow, that means I'm gonna have to get a snow plow and a snow shovel. <laughs> and get chains and, and big, get a big giant truck that can drive over three feet of snow. Yeah, you could like, always do. Like, you could always do ice fishing. I'm gonna have to freaking chop. I mean, I'm gonna man, I'm gonna look like Hugh Jackman in like <laughs> five I, minutes. Dude. I fail to see how that's a bad thing. Well, I mean, at my age, it's probably a little too late. <laughs> I mean, if I had hair, maybe I'd go for it. Otherwise, it just you know, you should wear your brown pants. It's not pretty. <laughs> but with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the temple and enjoy the insanity at play here. Appreciate it. And. Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> well, I don't really drink, but I'll, I'll tip of the hat to you, sir. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Follow at Epic Voice Guy on all the things. Mm-hmm. And, of course, a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the Internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>